Hey everybody, it's Bolshi here, back with another Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous build video. Today's going to be a really quick video because the full release came out today, and I want to get to playing it, but um, I never really made an angel build, so I thought I would get this out before I actually start my full playthrough. When I do my playthrough, I'm going to uninstall all my, all my mods, play it from start to finish, and then start uploading some content after that. So I just want to get this build out there before I start playing. I call this build the Purging Flame, and that really has to do with a, a build choice that we make very late in the game. I'll explain that when we get there. This is going to be my take on the typical Holy Avenger style character. So a crusader that is compelled by divine intervention to wage war against evil. Now this is the first build I've come up with that uses a spellbook merge, so I'm going to describe the mechanics. Now the angel allows you to merge your mythic spellbook with a full divine caster. So that means clerics and oracles. And what that allows you to do is to add your mythic rank to your caster level for all purposes. So anything that is affected by caster level is increased by your mythic rank. So for example, we take mythic rank 3 where we choose angel at about level 9. So it's going to bump our caster level up to 9 plus 3 which is 12 and now we're a 12th level caster. We get all the spells of a 12th level, level caster. So you basically instantly get 6th level spells. Um, all of your variable effects that depend on caster level are bumped up to 12. So things like damage dice, uh, durations of spells, caster level checks to overcome spell resistance. All of those things are increased by your mythic rank. So a very, very powerful thing. It makes the middle of the game so much easier. And the power jump is extremely noticeable. So let's jump into the build here. Now we're going to go a full 20 levels in Oracle. I chose the Oracle because as this holy warrior character, um, unlike the cleric, an Oracle is chosen by divine powers. He really doesn't have a choice in the matter. Clerics get their powers through devotion and study. Oracles are kind of imbued with their power um, by divine intervention. So I think that really suits the build here. We're going to go with the standard oracle. I'm going to go ASMR, and I'm going to go Angelkin to get Strength and Charisma. Um, the background doesn't really matter. You could do whatever role-playing choice you want to. We're going to go 19 Strength, 12 Constitution, 18 Charisma. Charisma is going to be our casting stat. We're going to really benefit from high Strength and Charisma. And for most of the game, we are a melee build. I'm going to go Persuasion, Use Magic Device, Mobility. You could go with whatever you want here. Maybe uh, Lore Religion could be good as a role-playing choice. Our first feat is going to be Power Attack. This is going to be a two-handed um, weapon damage dealing character, and Power Attack is really solid for two-handed weapons. Um, your Curse is not terribly important. There are some that you definitely want to avoid. Wolf's Guard Face has the least drawbacks. Um, I kind of like lame. I like the idea of the, the old guy who's a little bit slower, but just really, uh, you know, hard to fatigue, hard to get e exhausted, can wear heavy armor into combat. I think I'm going to go with lame, just for role playing. Our first mystery, and we're going to take another one with a mythic ability way later in the game. Our first mystery is going to be battle, and this is what turns us into a melee character. We get a ton of great spells. Our revelations really improve our, um, our melee abilities and... Uh, it's a great fit and really strong overall. Skill at Arms, first level, is going to give us proficiency in all martial weapons and heavy armor. So right out of the gate, we can wear all the weapons and armor we want. Spells, I'm going to go with Divine Favor and Shield of Faith to begin with. And for this one, I'm actually going to go Lawful Good. Um, number one is a great role-playing choice for this particular playthrough, being an angel. Uh, and in fact, I like this. This Later on in the game, I'm going to really roleplay this as being kind of that um, stereotypical, really strict lawful good, seeing things in very black and white terms. So lawful good is good here. Also, we get to benefit from the stow grace of the champion later in the game. Second, second level, we're going to take another level of oracle. We don't get a whole lot here. We get to choose... Oh, actually, we get our bonus spell of enlarged person. Very good for a two-handed weapon build. You can now attack from the back row. Level 3 is going to be Oracle. No surprises. All, all 20 levels. All Oracle. We're going to take Cleave. We're going to get some use out of this for the first few levels because uh, we don't have... Our BAB is not high enough to get more than one attack. So if you have two enemies clustered around you, this is actually a good use of your action. We also really want to get uh, Cleaving Finish, which that is a prerequisite for. I'm going to go with Weapon Mastery at 3rd uh, level. 
And, you know, to go with the holy warrior feel, uh, I'm going to go with greatsword. There's a lot of great two-handed weapons out there, but I'm going to choose greatsword for this one. And my next spell, I'm going to go with Unbreakable Heart. Unbreakable Heart is a round per minute buff that uh, dispels mind-affecting effects that rely on negative emo emotions, crushing despair, rage, and fear, and also effects that would cause them to harm an ally. So things like confusion. And there's actually a lot of confusion in the early game. So this is a really, really strong spell to pick up. At level four, we're going to bump up our strength. All of our ability score increases are going in strength. Get our skills up. We get some second level spells. Uh, let's see here. I am going to start off with Align Weapon so we can get that um, the good alignment on our weapon, which will bypass a lot of the early game damage reduction. We get Cure Wounds for free, and we also get Bold Strength for free from our, um, from our Mystery. At level 5, get our skills out of the way. Our feet is going to be Cleaving Finish. Every time we get a kill with our two-handed weapon, we get a free attack near uh, an enemy that is within our reach. We're going to get a lot of use out of that. I'm going to go with Remove Fear, 10 minute buff to give us a buff on, or a plus 4 bonus on fear saving throws. Also, if somebody is under the effect of a fear spell, uh, this will suppress that effect for the duration of the spell. Next level, up to you. I like to have lesser restoration. There's a lot of ability drain and damage in the early game, so being able to remove that on command is really great. At level 6, we're going to pick up our third level spells. And I'm going to start off with Archon's Aura. This is just a really solid um, debuffing ability. It gives you an aura that gives you a 20-foot radius where enemies must succeed on a will save, or they take a minus two penalty to attack, saving throws, and armor class. Great spell. And it's a minute per level. Our feet at level 7 is going to be outflank. We should have our feet to be high enough to get this now. And we are going to take... Warsight here. Warsight is going to let us roll for initiative twice and take the better result. And at 7th level, which is what we are now, we get Uncanny Dodge, so we can't be caught flat-footed. That means we get our Dexterity bonus, which is 0, to we d never lose that. So really, we're getting that for the initiative. Oh, you know, I forgot. We probably want to pick up Bless in the early game, because you don't have Heroism yet. So um, maybe get this before the Unbreakable Heart and remove Fear. Yeah, Bless is a nice little buff in the early game. I like to go with Remove Paralysis. When you need it, you need it. It's nice to have on hand. And I'm going to go with, by the way, we got Magical Vestment from our Battle Mystery. So this is a really solid AC buff, lasts an hour level. Uh, I'm going to go with Prayer here for a round per level luck bonus to attack rolls, damage, saves, and skill checks. Also gives a penalty to our enemies. At level 8, a little more strength your skills out of the way. We get to choose a weapon for improved critical. This is from our weapon mastery revelation at third level. And of course, we're going to go with Greatsword. You can choose whatever you want, but I like Greatsword. Crusader's Edge, that's our first spell. This basically gives us bane to our, uh, our weapon when we're fighting demons. Well, really any evil outsider, but the majority of those evil outsiders are going to be demons. And that gives us an extra plus two to hit it gives us an extra plus 2d6 force damage on every attack, and if we crit, they have to make a saving throw or become nauseated for 1-3 to three rounds. And nauseated means they can't do anything. If they do save, they're still sickened for one round, so they still get some penalties. At level 9, and this is at about the point in the game where we're going to merge, so I'm actually going to... Um, uh, finish leveling at level 9, and then I will do the mythic rank so you can see the spells that you get with the merge. It'll make sense once I do it. Okay, at level 9, we are going to go with Dazzling Display. Dazzling Display is not great on its own, but it is a prerequisite for something we really want later. Grace is nice. Kind of underestimate the value of this. It's a swift action, and you can't get hit with attacks of opportunity for moving. So if you need to reposition, you pop this for a swift action. That means you can cast it any time during your, your round. And then run away without getting attacks of opportunity. So this is really helpful if you need to get healed up or if you need to um, you know save one of your squishies that's getting targeted. And our next third level spell. I like resist energy on a spontaneous caster. Just being able to have all these energy types on demand, I like 
like that. Uh, remove curse is helpful. Let's see, what else? I like to do delay poison on scrolls, so I don't get that. Um, we're not investing heavily in charisma, so I'm not going to take things that require saving throws because that uh, our, sa our DCs for those are going to be kind of low. At fourth level, our next spell, I'm going to go with Divine Power. A round per level buff, very strong, gives you a stacking, or I should say a scaling luck bonus on attack rolls and damage rolls. And uh, strength checks, strength-based skill checks. Also, you get an extra attack per round, like haste. And at this point in the game, even though we're level 9, we did merge our spell book at this point. So this would be cast as a level 12 caster. And let's see, so for every 3 casters, that's going to give us plus 4 to attack and damage already. Very strong. At level 10, I'm going to go Oracle. Now, as I'm doing this build video, I'm going to kind of swap back and forth and try to make sure that my Mythic level matches about what I would be at each point in the game. That's going to be kind of tough to do, so bear with me. We get some extra spells here. Now, you can see that I'm getting 6th level spells at level 10. Why? Because at this point in the game, you've merged your spell book, you've increased your caster level by your Mythic rank. Our next choice here, I'm going to go with Death Ward. I want to have that ready at all times. And I want a Blasting spell. I'm going to go with Flame Strike. We've picked up some good ones. Other good spells include things like Cleanse to heal yourself and cure a bunch of conditions, um, debilitating effects. Burst of Glory if you want to give your party a sacred bonus to attack and saves. Um, those are really the only ones that I'm thinking of here. Get another level 6 spell. Uh, I'm going to pick up Heal there. Heal is a great healing spell all through the game. Cures all kinds of conditions. Does good healing. You will use it often. Our feet at level 11 is going to be Shatter Defenses. And at about this time, we get another revelation as well. At level 11, I'm going to go with Combat Healer, be able to get off some of those healing spells that we need as a swift action once per day. Um, actually, twice per day at level 11. So um, that's very helpful to keep your party up or keep yourself up if you're in trouble. Now, we're level 11, but we get to add our Mythic rank, which means we're getting really close to level 8 spells where we get um, Frightful Aspect. And when you have Frightful Aspect, everything is going to be um, automatically shaken with no saving throw, so getting Shatter Defenses is really great. Shatter Defenses allows you to attack flat-footed AC on shaken targets, um, which means they don't get their, their Dexterity bonus to AC. Now, I know that's a mouthful, but it's a great combination. Our first 7th level spell, 7th level spells are um, leave a little bit to be desired for me. I'm going to go with Bestow Grace of the Champion. Uh, we're probably going to be using our Angel spells at this point. Uh, I think I'm wearing the ring that gives me this. We'll talk about that later. But you get some pretty solid spells like this one for 1 minute per caster level. All of your attacks deal an additional 1d6 holy damage per 4 caster levels. Uh, we right now are a level 14 caster. so. Uh, what's that next year? 3d6 holy damage. Pretty solid. Ward against weakness. All, all allies gain immunity to fatigue, exhaustion, nauseated, sickened, diseases, poisons, ability damage, and ability drain. This is amazing. Having this on your party at all times is going to be crucial. I'm not going to go through every single angel spell, but suffice to say that uh, they're quite good. At level 12, bump up strength. We get another Greater Weapon Focus. This is from our Weapon Master Revelation in the beginning of the game. And we're going to go with Great Sword again. So we have greater uh, Regular Weapon Focus, Greater Weapon Focus, Improved Critical, all for one Revelation. Pretty solid. Level 6. I think at this point I might take Blade Barrier. It's nice to get some guaranteed damage. And then I'll take Greater Restoration to restore negative levels and things like that. At level 13, we're going to get our skills out of the way. We're going to get our feet. Our feet is going to be Great Cleave. Now, at this point, these are kind of filler feats. You could, you could have, you know, uh, different choices where you can customize your character here. I really like Great Cleave. If you're surrounded by, you know, 10 or so small enemies and you're enlarged, 
this is a really great use of your action. Also, this is the prerequisite for improved cleaving finish, which is going to allow us to get an extra attack every single time we kill something instead of just once per round. So that's going to do all the work for us. This is the prerequisite for that. Going to go with that. And we get another 7th level spell. I go with the Resurrection. Be able to pick somebody up to full health um, if they go down in combat is pretty nice. And we get 8th level spells at this point because we should be Mythic Rank 4. Um, I already picked up, when I went Mythic Rank 4, I picked up Frightful Aspect. So the next spell I'm going to pick up here is probably going to be Holy Aura. We're going to get Firestorm from a ring, so I don't want to take this right now. I'm going to take Holy Aura. At level 14, we get our ninth level spells. So this is because we're Mythic Rank 4 thereabouts, so we get to get these really nice ninth level spells. I think the first thing I'm going to go with is Mass Heal. It really doesn't get any better than healing your whole party for 10 times your caster level and removing all negative effects, basically, from them. So, very strong spell. Um, also, we get our Angel ninth level spells, which are amazing giving your entire party Ages of the Faithful, which if you remember was basically every low-level defensive buff in the game. Sun form, you become incorporeal, uh, and you get the ability to shoot Holy Fire as a swift action, 1d6 damage per caster level. And of course, Wrath of the Righteous, the game's namesake here. Uh, all demons in a 40-foot radius around the caster make a will saving throw. If it's failed, everybody takes 10 damage per caster level. So we are going to be at 30 caster level when we max out. That's 300 damage. If they save, 30 d6. So, very strong stuff. Oh yeah, basically AoE resurrection here. At level 15, get our skills out of the way. We get improved cleaving finish. Now we can use cleaving finish any number of times per round. Every time we kill something, we get to get a, a free attack. We're going to take Iron Skin. We're kind of running out of good things here. We haven't taken our second mystery yet, so once we take our second mystery, we'll open this up a little bit, and our last revelation is a really good one. We get another 8th level spell. Don't take Firestorm. If you get this, it'll overwrite the level 7 Firestorm that you get from the ring, and we don't want to do that. You might take something like Greater Angelic Aspect, which gives you a lot of buffs, but it gives you a minor globe of invulnerability, which I believe negates all spells that are um, level 3 or lower. I might be wrong on that. Um, other ones to think about be Storm Bolts. And then I'm going to take Winds of Vengeance. And this gives you a additional plus 3 bonus, a 60 bonus to your speed, so you're flying around. You get total concealment against range attacks. If you're hit with a melee attack, um, you instantly do 5d8 damage bludgeoning, and the uh, target has to make a saving throw or get knocked prone. Nice little utility buff there. At level 16, we take another point of strength, get our skills out of the way, get another 9th level spell. I'm going to go with Summon Monster, get some um, Movonic Divas because we are good. At level 17, take. Now it's getting really close in the game to the point where we're going to be casting spells a lot as a swift action. So I'm actually going to come down here. I want those spells to land. So I'm going to grab spell penetration. I know we have, we have super high caster level, so maybe this isn't necessary, but I really want to make sure that we land those spells. And also we've kind of run out of good offensive feats for melee. Nothing much at level 18. You've pretty much capped out your spells. At level 19, at this point in the game, we've taken our Mythic Ability Second Mystery. We're going to take Greater Spell Penetration, just so we make sure we get all those spell resistance checks. And we're going to take Firestorm. And like I mentioned in the, uh, or like I will mention in the Mythic Rank part of this video, this is the point in the game where this character decides there is good, there is evil, um, anybody who is not supporting the cause for good is an enemy and must be purged by flames. So this spell is actually really cool. Not only is it like really good damage, so you drop a flaming circle on the ground that does 1d6 damage per caster level. 
it lasts for a number of rounds equal to your charisma mod. So with us, we'll be buffed with, oh, I think that'll be about seven rounds. So 1d6 damage per oracle level, 20d6 uh, for seven rounds, solid damage. Doesn't hurt your party, and it looks super cool. Fits the build theme too. And finally, at level 20, get our skills out of the way, we get two final revelations. We get our battle revelation, and I, I'm not entirely sure, but I kind of think that this is a placeholder because this is not the battle revelation in the, uh, the tabletop. But, you know, even if it is, it's pretty solid. And then we also get our flames revelation so that any fire spell we cast, and remember, we are going to purge by flames, um, any fire spell we cast is empowered. Pretty solid combo. All right, taking a look at our mythic path here. Now, I'm going to go pure uh, role-playing here. I'm going to go close to the heavens because we are going to go with a uh, full angel build here. So mm, there might be other things that are better statistically, but I, I think this is the way to go for this particular build. Okay, our first ability. Our mythic abilities and feats are kind of all taken up because we want all the casting feats. We're going to get a ton of spells. We get um, crazy good spells from our angel spellbook that gets merged to our oracle spellbook. So we want to cast as many of those as possible. Our first mythic ability is going to be abundant casting to get the ball rolling on that. We get four more first, second, and third level spells per day. At mythic rank two, we're going to take our first mythic feat. And because we're going two-handed weapons, Mythic Power Attack is really a, a big chunk of damage here, so I'm going to start with that. We also get to summon some Paladins, and we get Heaven's Breath, so we get um, Resist Acid, Resist Cold, and Immunity to Petrification. Is where mythic Rank 3 is where we're going to choose Angel. We're going to take the Mythic Ability, Improved Abundant Casting. Now, at this point, we're, we have Caster Level roughly 12, so we actually do get 4th, 5th, and 6th level spells for, um, to benefit from this. And here's where we choose Mythic Spellbook Oracle. This is going to merge our spellbooks, and you'll see that I get a bunch of new spells to my Oracle Spellbook right now. So let's see here. We get some extra second level spells. I think we'll go with maybe Effortless Armor to make those mobility checks. Get another third level spell. Remove Curse. Fourth level spells. Um, we're going to be blasting later. We're going to want some blasting spells. Um, I'll show you when we get that in the build. It's very late in the game, but we do want some. So I'm going to pick up Holy Smite right there. Uh, hopefully you have Scrolls of Death Ward or uh, somebody who can cast Death Ward and Freedom of Movement because you really do need these spells. If you don't want to buy Scrolls, then I would recommend picking up one of these. Probably Death Ward first, for sure. There's a lot of energy drain in the game. But for right now, I'm going to go with Holy Smite. And our fifth level spell. Again, I do want to get some... Um, uh, I, I do want to get some blasting spells, so I'm going to go, I'll go flame strike later. Right now, I'm going to pick up True Sing, just to make sure that I can hit those enemies that rely on illusions for their defense. And I think I'm also going to pick up Cleanse, because it's just a really nice Cleanse of Breath of Life to be able to pick somebody up um, who's died recently. Our sixth level spell, I'm going to go Eagle Soul. Gives us a, a sacred bonus to AC, sacred bonus to strength. All of these things stack with everything else. Plus five sacred bonus on persuasion checks. Uh, fast healing gives us just a ton of things. And any critical threat is automatically confirmed against evil creatures. So this really synergizes with everything we get. We also pick up Sword of Heaven. Uh, this imbues your weapon with holy power. It deals an addition 2d6 holy damage on every attack. Spells you cast deal an additional two dice of damage. And this, I believe you get two uses at this point, and it lasts for a minute. We're going to modify that, but for right now, that's what we get. We also get a, a slew of really powerful angel spells. And I don't want to go through every single one of them, but just suffice to say, these are going to be what you're spending your spell slots on for the most part. We get things like Bolt of Justice, powerful stroke of energy that deals 1d6 holy damage, and they need to make a saving throw or we get knocked prone. If the target's evil, it's 1d8 per level. Evil outsider, that means demons, 1d10 per level. With no cap, by the way. When we level this thing out, we're going to have 20 levels of oracle and 10 levels of angel, so that's a 30 level caster. Plus our, 30, uh, our additional two dice from Sword of Heaven, 
And just this little, I guess it's not a little, sixth level spell is going to be doing 32d10 to demons. 32d12 to demon lords. Crazy damage, crazy spells. Another one, Aegis, Aegis of the Faithful. You can see it gets the combined effect of shield, shield of faith, protection from arrows, displacement, resist fire, all the energy spells for one minute per caster level. Crazy stuff going on here. At Mythic Rank 4, we are going to take... We're actually going to take an extra mythic ability and we're going to pick up Enduring Spells. And there's a reason why we're picking this at exactly this time. Um, right now, anything that, any spell that you cast that would normally be longer than an hour is now going to be 24 hours. Okay, not too great because we don't have that many buffs that are greater than an hour. But we are going to pick up something next level that's really great. We also pick up an improved version of our Sword of Heaven. And without a doubt, the best one you can get right here is Everlasting Flame. So usually Sword of Heaven is one minute only. Now it's gonna scale with our Mythic Rank, one minute per Mythic Rank. So right now, every time we use Sword of Heaven, we get four minutes worth. We also pick up an eighth level spell. Now I'm assuming that you're about level 13 at this point in the game. So we're gonna pick up Frightful Aspect first. At Mythic Rank five, we are going to take Greater Enduring Spells. Now what this does is any time you cast a spell that would be five minutes or longer, it lasts for 24 hours. Now if you remember last Mythic level, we took Everlasting Flame so that our Sword of Heaven would last a minute per Mythic rank. So now our five minute Sword of Flame, or sorry, Sword of Heaven is gonna last us 24 hours. And if it doesn't do that right now because it's technically not over five minutes, it definitely will on our next Mythic rank. So this is a crazy buff. It takes something that is normally something you can only use one minute at, a minute at a time, and you use it the entire day. I am going to take Burning Bright for our improved Halo. Um, while this is active, which is all the time, all demons and undead are going to take 2d6 plus Mythic Rank damage per round. Nice little AoE damage buff. At Mythic Rank 6, we are going to go with... Weapon Focus. Now we have uh, Weapon Focus and Greater Weapon Focus, so this is going to double those bonuses. And we're also going to take, at this point, you get to pick one of these. There's a lot of good ones. Um, I would probably either go with um, Guide the Faithful for a penalty to AC, or maybe Abolish Guile, something like that. So what these do is um, they, get, they empower your healing spells to remove so disease, mind control effects, poison, things like that. And also your weapons are going to do more damage against enemies that are associated with disease, guile, poison, undead. I'm going to go with guile. There's a lot of uh, demons with mind control. Also, at level 6, all of our damage is converted into holy damage. Or sorry, mythic rank 6. All of our damage is converted to holy damage. So um, spells you cast, damage, weapon damage you deal. All that is turned into holy damage, which really nobody in the game has any re resistance to. So basically you completely ignore damage reduction from this point on. At Mythic Rank 7, we're going to take our second mystery, and we're going to take Flame. Now this is the point in the game that to me is kind of um, a major shift in my character's story when I actually do this playthrough. This is the point where he realizes, where he makes the, the very uh, harsh decision that there are two sides. There's good and evil, it's black and white. There are, um, there's, there's good in the world and there are the enemies of good and they have to burn, all right? So this is where he's gonna purge by fire uh, all non-believers, basically. Now, you get a bunch of things. First of all, you get a lot of spells. So you get some great fire spells, including Fiery Body, which is a great level 9 spell. But we also get to cast any spell that has the fire descriptor um, empowered. And starting at level, or mythic rank 8, we get to cast one of those spells as a swift action every single round. So that's why we're taking this. This really turns this build from pure melee to one of the most powerful Gish builds there is in the game. A Gish build is something that specializes in melee and spell damage. So uh, 
really late game, this thing becomes a, an absolute monster. And also, it has a cool little kind of storyline to it. Your next Halos is really up to you. I like Blinding Light to blind enemies. Blinding is a nice buff. Um, you know, I think I would go with that one. At Mythic rank 8, this is where things get really crazy. We get another feat, and I believe at this point we are going to take extra Mythic ability and make sure that we're getting more of those 7th, 8th, and ninth level spells. Four more per day. We also get to choose the Greater Sword of Heaven, and there's one that to me seems like the clear winner, Speed of Light. When you have Sword of Heaven active, which by the way we have 24 hours a day, you get to make two additional attacks as per haste, so two additional attacks at highest BAB, and all spells of level 7 or lower are quickened, so we get to cast a quickened spell every single round. Like I said, this immediately becomes an incredible Gish build that can do a lot of melee damage and a lot of spell damage and all of it is holy damage so it really fits the theme of um, purging evil through uh, fire and flames here and if you remember we picked up a ring that actually gives us the spell firestorm which i think we'll see right here yeah this is the spell right here oh no this is the firestorm Oracle mod. Anyway, Firestorm is an amazing blasting spell. It does uh, 22 d6 damage. We can cast that as an instant cast because we get it as a 7th level spell from a ring that we can buy from a vendor starting I think in chapter 2. So it's really easy to get and it's an amazing spell. Usually it's an 8th level spell but because we get it from the ring we cast it at 7th level and because we cast it at 7th level we get to get it instant cast. So really cool. At Mythic rank 9, we're going to take, at this point, you know, it's up to you. There's a lot of good things you could take. Maybe a beneficial curse. If you want to get the benefits of one of these curses without getting any of the drawbacks, that could be good. Um, maybe you want to go with Ever Ready for more damage on your attacks of opportunity. Thundering Blows. There's a lot of great choices here. Really up to you. You know, if you're running with a Scald, maybe you want to get Mythic Charge when you're doing your Beast Totem Charges. Room for... Um, room for creativity here. We don't need to take Ascendant Element. You might think so because we're going to be doing fire damage, but remember that our improved um, sort, of, uh, sort of Heaven does all holy damage, so we don't need to worry about resistances. I think I'll go with Thundering Blows. And finally, at Mythic Rank 10, we're going to go with Improved Critical. I don't think we need to get Spell Penetration because we're up to, I think it's like a plus 34 check to our, um, you know, we have 30 levels of casting. We took the two Spell Penetration feats. This would take us up to level, or it would take us up to plus 44 for caster level checks. I don't think we need that much. So I'm just going to go with Improved Critical Greatsword. Give us some more melee damage. I'm also going to go with a final improvement to Greater Sword of Heaven and I'm going to go with um, Overwhelming Flames. So attacks of the owner with the imbued weapon now deal addition wep additional weapon damage to uh, all enemies within five feet. So every time you hit one enemy, you basically cleave to every other enemy in melee range. Pretty solid. All right, so let's take a look at this build in action real quick. Now, I did make a mistake. When I made this save file, I actually did this build as a Shield Slam build. So it's a little bit different from the build that I just listed out. Um, it, can, it, it will have very similar damage, okay? Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop that really cool Oracle Revelation here. Oh, it casts on myself, okay. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, it just casts on me. So I'm gonna get in here, get these guys on me, and we are gonna cast Cleansing Flames. Well, it's called Firestorm. But there it is. I mean, that's a pretty badass effect right there. And it doesn't hurt you, but it hurts all of these guys. Once I get my attacks out, there we go. Get some damage going there. You can see, actually, you can't see anything because everything's on fire. But I'm going to drop an instant cast Firestorm. That was with my shield. There's our Firestorm. That is extremely low. How do you roll 20d6 and get 34? kind of curious on what the probability of getting something that low is. 
messing up my build videos. But anyway, <laughs> he made it, he made his saving throw. These guys did not. So you can see these are some of the this is some of the damage that we can look forward to as a swift action every single round. Guaranteed. Not like Eldritch Knight where you have to crit. Every single round, starting at Mythic Rank 8, of course, uh, we can really pop out a 22d6 empowered firestorm every single round. Very cool stuff. All right, that's the build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.